Man, I never realized how expensive traditional stone countertops are. And for me, it honestly doesn't make sense to spend so much money on something like that. This is going to be for our guest bathroom, which rarely gets much use. So I'm going to try something a little different. In today's video, I'm going to make a custom L-shaped concrete countertop. And if this works, it's going to be a very cheap alternative. Concrete's only about $6 a bag, and I think I can get away with using only about three bags for this project. The first thing we need to do is create a mold for the concrete to go in. For this, we are going to use something called melamine, which is particle board that has a smooth, glossy resin coating. This is important because concrete won't stick to this outer layer. I had my local hardware store pre-cut one large 4x8 sheet down to pieces to transport home. The thickness I am using is 3 quarter inch. I will need to cut these down to build a base and side rails. The side rails that I am currently measuring out will each be 2 and 3 quarter inches. This amount is the thickness of the countertop that I want to end up with, plus the thickness of the melamine that I'm using. This will make a little more sense when I assemble the mold later. This will give me an end result of a 2 inch thick countertop, which will give me a clean modern look while also being very durable. So my buddy Seth came over to help me cut down these pieces. He's going to show me how to use a table saw and a miter saw. These are all things I've never used before, but it's a good chance for me to learn and it'll really help speed up the process. But just remember, you don't need any of these fancy tools. A straight edge with a circular saw would work just fine. Big shout out to Seth for all the help though. Now I am going to focus on the base and the main shape of the countertop. I used a circular saw and a jigsaw to make the L shape I was going for. I dry fitted the base to make sure I was going to be happy with the size and fit. I went with about an inch and a half overhang and it all looked great. It was now time for a miter saw lesson to cut the rails down to their final sizes. I did a 45 degree miter on two of the ends, you will see why later. Next, I put everything on a flat surface. I pre-drilled and attached the side rails with drywall screws. Take your time and be sure that the screws don't protrude into the actual inside of the mold. As a little tip, you can actually use a scrap piece of melamine to mark the exact area that the screws need to go into. It also really helps to clamp down the mold while drilling. This is where the two mitered pieces come in. It's important so that this corner only has melamine exposed and not any bare wood. I used a speed square to make sure all rails were at 90 degrees and then I added more screws to the top parts of the corners. Now I needed to make a spacer for where the faucet lines and drain pipe would come through the countertop. For this I screwed together two scrap pieces of melamine with a half inch scrap piece of wood in the middle. This will give me a total of two inches which will be the thickness of the countertop. I made sure to use smooth tape for the edges so it would not stick to the concrete. I gave the mold a good vacuum and then wiped it down with some TSP solution just to clean it. Next I traced around the vessel's sink so that I had a better idea of where the drain pipe and the faucet lines were going to go. Now I could hot glue the spacer in place. It is very important to caulk the corners of the mold. To do this I masked off a small gap with painter's tape. You can use any type of 100% silicone caulking, but I find it's easier to use a dark color. I added a bead of caulk to each corner and smoothed it with my finger. You can also use a special tool like this where it's actually made for caulking. Before it was fully dried, I removed the tape. I later decided to add more caulking to the front edge of the mold only. This way the edges against the wall would be a bit more squared while the edge at the front would have a nice rounded edge finish. In order to make the countertop even more durable, I'm going to add some steel wire remesh to the concrete within the mold. So I used some pliers to cut down a couple pieces to the shape of the mold. Be sure to leave some space at the end, you don't want this going completely to the edges of the mold walls. I found that using a silver marker really helped me locate where to cut. I 
I dry fitted these pieces and then attached them using some zip ties. Once again I cleaned the mold and then wiped the entire thing down using some paste wax. This will really help to release the mold from the concrete later on. This step is optional but I highly recommend doing this. Make sure to get everything including the middle spacer. For this I am using Quickcrete 5000. It is very cheap and very durable. Add some water to a mixing bin, then add the dry concrete. I used a hoe and mixed until I had the consistency of a wet oatmeal. Add more water and mix as needed. Once you have the correct consistency, it was time to start filling the mold. Now this first layer is the most important because remember the bottom of this mold will actually be the top of the final countertop. So you really want to make sure you hand pack the concrete in, into every corner. You want to keep filling until the mold is about halfway full. Now it's really crucial to start vibrating the mold. This will ensure that there will be no air bubbles and voids within the countertop. You can bang the mold up and down on the table and bang the sides and bottom with a rubber mallet. Now I could add the steel wire. Then continue to fill and pack the mold with concrete all the way to the top. My wife Christina would pack the mold while I mixed more concrete. You want to overfill the mold then screed the top with a spare piece of wood. Just scrape it back and forth over the top of the mold to remove any excess concrete. Once again, vibrate like crazy. I did a quick pass with a rounded trowel and then decided to screed once more. Now for the final troweling. Now don't forget this exposed surface will be the bottom so this doesn't have to be perfect. So I have never troweled concrete before but it really wasn't too hard. Just take your time and smooth everything out. In order to let the concrete dry, it is very important to cover the mold with plastic. Concrete needs water and moisture to cure properly so the plastic will prevent too much moisture from escaping too quickly. Every 24 hours or so, I spray down the concrete with water to aid the curing process. For this large of a concrete project, it's best to wait at least 4 days, but I wanted to be overly cautious, so I waited about a week. Okay, today is the day. Today is the day to demold the concrete countertop, and I have to be honest, I'm a little nervous. I really hope I didn't do all this for nothing, but let's see how it turned out. I removed all screws with a drill and started peeling away the rails. I was pleasantly surprised to find that the mold practically melted off. This is thanks to the melamine surface and the paste wax we rubbed on it. The edges were looking great, but now it was time to reveal the most important part, the top. And thankfully it came out great. This middle piece took a little effort, but loosened up with a little bit of drilling. To get a smooth surface, I just used an orbital sander with 220 grit sanding disc.
You want to sand quite a bit, but if you sand too much, you could expose the aggregate and end up with too many pinholes. You can see the pinholes here. You could fill these, but I honestly don't mind them. They'll be filled with sealer later anyways. The next day, it was time to add the finish coat. I started by wiping the surface with water and then let it dry. I will be using a sealer called Tough Duck and I will be applying it with a microfiber pad. I started with the bottom and the back edges and I wiped it on in one direction. I let that dry for about 30 minutes then added a second coat in the opposite direction and perpendicular to the first layer. Now for the most important part, the top and front edges. I wiped this down with water and let it dry. Then I added the sealer in the same manner as the bottom. I wiped one layer on in one direction, I let that layer fully dry, then I added the next layer in the opposite direction using the crisscross technique. This method will provide superior protection to the countertop surface. I repeated this process for a total of four layers and the final product was perfect. With some help, I lowered it in place. As you can imagine, this will be pretty heavy, so make sure you have some helping hands. It's also a good idea to add a bead of clear silicone to the top of the cabinet base. I do this later on. I did one last check to make sure it was level and didn't need any wood shims. Lucky me, it was perfect. Now that the countertop is installed, I laid the tile directly over the top of this, but I will be showing that in its entirety in another video. The last thing we need to do is add one final protective coat. This will really add to the countertop's durability and make it even more waterproof. This is the wax that I will be using. It gets good reviews from other YouTubers. To apply, I'm using a simple buffing pad. You just put a little on the pad and then rub the wax in a circular motion all over the surface. When done, take a microfiber rag and wipe off the excess. This wax will leave the countertop with a really nice velvety sheen that's not too glossy and not too matte. Now that the wax is on, liquids will easily be repelled. Okay, so I know I'm jumping ahead quite a bit in this bathroom series, but I want to show each individual aspect in its entirety and in as much detail as possible. With that said, I'm going to show you guys some shots after the sink's installed and the tile wall, just so you have an idea of how this kind of countertop will come together. I am pleasantly surprised how this countertop came out. It's honestly way better than I expected. I also love that it's not the typical rectangle shape. This ledge over the toilet really comes in handy. I love the raw and rugged look of the concrete. But ultimately, the obvious best part about this countertop was just how cheap it was to make. You can see how the edge along the wall is more squared off, and the edge along the front is nice and rounded. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Stay tuned for the next video where I will go over in detail how I installed the vessel sink and all the plumbing and all that. And also I will go over my process for how I did the tile wall. If you found this video helpful at all, please give it a like. It really helps out the channel. And also don't forget to subscribe and turn notifications on. That way you'll be notified when the next video posts. See you next time everyone.